Hi everyone. We're in my bathroom this evening. This is another video about how I'm modifying the bathroom to be safe for me. So what I'm going to be talking about is how I've added this wall tablet holder for the tub. The practical part of this is letting me easily either call 911 or letting me text a neighbor to get help if I get stuck in the tub. And unfortunately, it's a very real possibility, but I think the risk can be managed if I can reach the outside world and if I could cope with someone coming here and assisting me over the tub while naked. And it may not be pleasant, um, but I have had to have help with showering in the past because of my hips and my ankles and my knees. And it's done professionally and sort of at the first opportunity, you're helped getting your underwear or your boxer shorts on and you know, you're covered up in your genital area. So being able to get into the warm water really helps me. You know, it makes a big difference in easing the pain and easing the stiffness. So I didn't want to not use the tub when I almost got stuck in it in October or the start of November. So instead, I started thinking about how I could prepare for it, how I could manage the risk. So my initial plan was to buy this wee little tablet holder and just have my tablet sit beside me while I was in the tub. And if I needed to reach for help, then it was there and the tablet was sitting on it. And it worked good as a proof of concept. So then the next part is to make it easy to reach. And if I got really stiff and couldn't bend to the left, unfortunately it happens, you want to have it right in front of you, kind of like you're driving a car. So I looked for available wall mount tablet holders. That's why I searched for online. There's any number of them. You may spend as little as $8. I did see some in the low $100 range. I didn't want to buy the cheapest. In fact, I did buy the cheapest model to start with. And I looked at it and said, well, yeah, I can get it up and stall it, but it's going to break in a few months. And that's just not helpful. So this one, it has a metal, uh, metal aluminum along this part and this part. And the only plastic is actually the little part here that grips the tablet. That made a lot more sense to me than putting up a cheap and flimsy holder. So the biggest challenge is actually has to do with the shower head. The challenge is that this is the faucet and in behind here, there's a pipe that goes up to feed the water through the shower head. If you haven't seen a hose constructed, you wouldn't maybe know that it's there. But if you're drilling through the wall, you have to be mindful. Are you going to hit a power wire? And are you going to hit a water line and cause yourself a major repair? So what I did was drilled through the tiles very gently. And then in behind here is called cement board. It's what the tiles are uh, cemented onto. You possibly could have water board in behind your tub surround. Uh, water boards like drywall. It's got about an eighth of an inch of, uh, um, it's got a bacterial component to it in that initial eighth of an inch. And then it's just normal drywall past that. So water boards much less expensive and it depends on how the host was built and the budget at the time when the host was built. So I went through the wall with my first hole and then what I did was took a barbecue skewer made out of bamboo and I pushed it through the hole and then I marked how far it went before I was into the copper pipe so that I wouldn't damage it. Now, what this was meant to be installed with as what the manufacturer sent were these drywall anchors. Now, I would never personally use a drywall anchor 
against a ceramic tile. The reason is when you start putting the screw in it, it, it deflects, it goes wide, and that's kind of how it grabs the side of drywall. So this is a normal one right here, and it's a nice straight line. And this kind of have, has love handles, if I can say it to you like that. So what I wanted to do was use toggle bolts. So for toggle bolts, they go in the wall like this, and then once they're through, you know, they spring out, and when you tighten the screw, it puts tension on the cement board or the water board or the drywall that's in behind there. These are a lot stronger as a rule than most drywall anchors. Not all of them, but most. And for doing a ceramic tub, what, what made sense to me was having a large block here against the ceramic tile and then have the tension coming from in behind against the water board. What I was trying to avoid was crack in one of my tiles and, you know, this has been discontinued, it's an old pattern, and if it cracked, I either replace all of them or I live with a cracked tile. So I find a toggle bolt much more of a safe option for installing than using the, the drywall anchors. Now the challenge of this is when I did my measurement for where the copper pipe is, I had to cut off about the last a half an inch of the bolt right here. Now it's easy to cut it off. If you don't have a power tool, a hacksaw will do it and about two minutes of hard graft just going like this and once you start into it, you've got a little channel and it's straightforward. I happen to have a Dremel rotary tool and you just turn it on and it's got one of those paper discs that spins really fast. It just slices right through it and it's straightforward and fast. Although you need to wear safety goggles because I did blow one up. It just happens. They just fracture. So the challenge of this is you need to know the width of the ceramic tile and the width of whatever's in behind here. So for me, it was this much right here. So then you need to know, well, can the toggles fit and, and still have enough um, threads to stay on the toggle bolt when you go through? And yes, when I cut that off, the toggle bolt was still able to stay on. And then as you tighten it, what you're doing is bringing it closer but at least this end here isn't puncturing or injecting itself to the copper pipe that lets me wash my hair. So it worked in this case to do that. The other hole here was a lot more challenging. I bought a wider toggle bolt for the upper one because of the way that this was built, but I couldn't use it all the way through because we're back to the problem of needing this much space for the ceramic tile and the, the cement board. And the parts that bend here, these little wings, they need to be much further back because they're longer. So how I did it for the upper hole was pushed it in tight and put it in the wall. And then I epoxied all around it to hold it and have this join into the cement board. And for this, I used the JB Weld Marine Weld. Now, you wouldn't normally do that type of installation, but there was going to be the smaller toggle bolt that anchored it in here. So this was just for keeping it steady, not letting it bend left and not letting it bend right. So once I used my level and it was set, then I left it alone for 24 hours for the JB Weld to cure, and then at that point is when I started using it. You did need to have the patience to do that. The other part that goes with this is practical. It's about not letting water leave the environment that's designed for it. So before I tighten, before I tighten this in tight, I back filled the hole and put all kinds of caulking on the wall so that when it's smushed together 
it was kind of like a peanut butter and jam sandwich that the jam and the peanut butter were splitting out and spilling out on the sides. What that has to do with anything is not letting the water get in there and creating a mold problem a year down the road or two years down the road. So then after it splats on, then what you do is take a piece of toilet paper and you just wipe up the excess and get it off. And as long as you do it punctually, it may look messy when you do it, but if you'll sit there and take the five minutes it takes to clean off the excess silicone, then you're good. I do want to tell you again that there is lots of silicone available. You know, there's windows and doors, there's bathroom kitchens, there's outdoor silicone that may be used for an ease trough. So you want to look for what's been made for the bathroom. 24 hours after this was done, I took my clear silicone tube made for the bathroom and I just went around the edge just one more time so it's got that extra little layer of protection airing on the side of caution and not creating mold in my home. So if you were to take this on and sort of why I've not demonstrated doing this project is because there's different types of tablet holders and you need to find the one that you're comfortable with. I will put the link below in what I purchased for those who might be interested. I've actually not installed it the way that it was designed. I've done a few other things to it um, that made it work for the tight space that the bathroom's in. You know, I put this on upside down, for example, and doing that meant that I also, and using the toggle bolts, meant that I need to get rid of little, two little tabs on the inside that were meant to give a bit of stability. Um, to keep the plate here in place. And so I lined the very edges along the inside here and the inside here before that screw was tightened with epoxy to make it really strong and not be flimsy. And you know, with the bolt in the center and the epoxy keeping it stable, it does work. So the practical part of this is being able to get into the tub and either watching a podcast, watching something relaxing, or, you know, if you are finding life difficult, you could put on your favorite nature video and just enjoy the warmth of the water, maybe a glass of wine or whatever your favorite juice is, and dim the lights and actually spend 45 minutes rejuvenating and boosting your mental health while you're in the tub and it may leave you out of here feeling much better about life or at least your body's at, at ease and then your mind can work a whole lot better instead of being in sort of fight or flight mode and wanting to attack the world you might be able to work with the problems that you've got and work the problems to a solution anyway this is what I've got for you today um, it's proving really helpful I might add I've been enjoying watching videos while in the tub and I've got the peace of mind if I do need to gain help I can do so. I have one more step planned for this. I'm going to be buying a motorcycle USB charging port and putting it right here and then having it go to the power to the house. Why I would be doing this is that a motorcycle USB charging port has a fuse in it so if it did get wet the fuse would kick off and you'd be safe. And you need to know a little bit more than that concerning electricity. I would highly suggest you talk to an automobile mechanic or a motorcycle mechanic to learn more about the fuses and the devices available and then just a power adapter to, to go from the mains electricity down to the 12 volts in that these devices tend to make. I will share a separate video about this when I go to do this. Um, I'm kind of focusing on other things during the next week or two. Anyway, for those of you who need it, it's an option. It's peace of mind. It's morale boosting for when you put a video on. And it's a chance to just not be tense and make the best out of life. And 
do something that, that you actually have control of to help you go forward in your life. Thanks so much for this time that you spent with me today. Bye for now.